This is how you have to understand when patient complains. Let me tell you one thing. If any patient complains of head nose and hair, they are never wrong. There is always a reason for it. And always try to search where is the reason. And this is what you have to learn today. Because by the time you pass your exams and go for priorities, this is going to become a phenomenal <coughs> concept so that you will reach the level of cataract surgery where you will have 6 4 vision. Let me ask you, how many of you have seen 6 4 vision post cataract in practice? Not a single. In my practice, we have 80% with 6 4 vision. So, this is what I want to tell you that this is what is going to happen in the next few years. It is 6 4 and N6 with multifocal. I'm talking of with multifocal. This is how the right distribution is. That is what he has covered everything, so I'm not going to repeat. Now, the other thing which is very important in multifocal is it's a 6 mm optics, right? It is either full optic refractive surface or it is a slightly smaller optic subject, the surface. So either it is 6 mm, the front surface is having multiple things which is giving a refractive medium, or the center only and the peripheral will remain small. So there are two types. Again, these lenses are divided according to the ability to correct the age variability of the part. So they are spherical aberration correcting, age spherical or spherical lenses. This is the second part. And the third part is apodized and non apodized Apodized means it, it increases the light and decreases the light according to the size of the pupil. Now, the full optic effect to multifocal, it provides multifocal vision, it reduces the pupillary, pupil dependency. Not a single multifocal lens is pupil independent. Whatever the company says, it is never pupil independent. The disadvantage of full optic is equal distribution of light for all the pupils and potential to have glares and halos in the night. This is the past, this is no more available now. Now, how do we divide the distribution of light? Some of the lenses when they tell you that 40-40% for distance and 40% for near light distribution and 20% is lost. But which factors do you decide about this? The central zone, which is without any refractive surface, decides about the addition of the multiple, that is plus 3, plus 3.5 or 4. But the distribution of light depends upon the height of each mile from the center to the periphery and that is equivalent to much less than your hair thickness. Most of them have one micron around. So you can understand the engineering marvel whenever these lenses are designed. The first one I will discuss is Giza. Which is very popular now. <coughs> it has got a distribution of like 65% for distance and 35% for near. It is a shape of plate haptics. It was available in modified C in the past, now not available. It has got two holes and the lower one goes to the left of your side. Whether you are doing right or left hand, it goes to the left of your le left hand. So that you don't put reverse because when you put ultra, the diaphragmatic difference is 2.5 diaphragm. So when you're putting this lens, you have to put it properly. But the lower haptic when it goes, the hole remains in the left hand side. You see the other factors which are there. Now you have heard about 65% and 35%. Now suppose I reduce the light to minimum. You can't read properly. So if you reduce the light from 100% to 65% or to 35%, you, your reading will be very less. But multifocal lenses, it does not happen like this. They don't complain so much. Even of the distribution of light for distance and near is less. So what is happening is there is a constructive interference and there is a destructive interference. So each ring, the up and the lower, they divide the light in such a way. Then waves are there which reaches the retina. They add to each other. So instead of, in spite of 35% light for here, they have a wonderful vision because the light intensity gets added with each ring around it. This is what destructive is. So whenever there is a destructive of the light, of the lens, you get this angle. 
The second one is FODI lens, that is this. It has got a central 3.6 millimeter of, of diffractive zones, and the peripheral is mono optics. This 3.6 millimeter diver FODI diffractive zone precise reduction in steps of height from 1.3 micron to 0.2 micron from center to periphery. Lower steps that are more light to distance focus, that's what I told you. As the pupil size changes, the amount of light increases or decreases. The thickness of the human hair there is 60 micron, the thickness of the red cell is 7 micron, but acne soft has got as low as 0.2 micron. Apparatus defective surface, I told you, it increases the light for distance when the pupil size is more. It increases the light for near when the pupil size is less. Now, second part is aberration curve. You have a human cornea which is spherical aberration. This is what happens. The cornea remains constant throughout the life. The aspheric the sphericity, aspheric of the cornea remains the same. Unfortunately, the second part is not coming. So, as the age advances, the ability to neutralize the spherical aberration goes down, and you have first positive spherical aberration of the cornea, and the lens adds to that. So, you have some of the old people who have said that the vision is reduced, but there is no character, there is no medical problem. The main problem is the lens cannot accommodate the spherical aberrations of the cornea, and hence they have further deterioration of the vision. The so future is going to be that you have to learn to neutralize these spherical aberrations and get the highest possible vision for distance and need. <coughs> now, when you have 40 years old patient who has got good accommodation, no spherical aberration, you see all the leaves are very clear. Here the end advances, the positive spherical aberrations, the middle edge which get added to the positive spherical aberration of the lens itself. So you have some amount of abnormal B. This is again with the cataract. So this is how the spherical aberration causes some amount of blurring of vision around and deterioration of the quality of the. It is not the optical quality of the IOL in isolation that creates the image, but the optical quality of IOL in conjunction with the optical quality of the cornea. See, this is how the poor spherical aberration corrected it. That is the spherical lens what in the past we were using it. All the PMP lenses at present are spherical lenses. And this is how you get the quality. Even though the patients can read this, but they cannot identify it properly. And this is what your aim has been. And if you achieve this, your 6 form vision is almost certain in 80% of the cases. This is how the contrast looks. This is with the spherical lens, and this is with the proper character of the spherical lens. So if an eye has positive spherical aberration is implanted in an eye, exhibiting a cornea which has exhibit some degree of positive spherical aberration, the spherical aberration of combined system will be positive and you will get something like this. So this is how you neutralize the spherical aberrations. The spherical aberration of the lens is due to the fact that the light rays of peripheral zones of the lens are refracted with larger refraction angles, so they fall in front of the phobia. And that is known as positive spherical aberration. If it falls behind the phobia, it is negative spherical aberration. Negative spherical aberration occurs post classic. Remember, post classic patients don't put a spherical lenses, a spherical lens will go. So, when you have pseudophagic lens, when you have positive star, the old lens, that is spherical lens, you have quality of vision like this. When there is a neutralization of spherical aberration of the cornea and the lens, you have the vision like this, which is very crystal clear. And if you have to leave some amount of mind spherical aberration, which is an aim to get some amount of depth of focus, then you will have this kind of one. But patient will have less addition required for the reading. You have five minutes, sir. Yes. Now, how do you, you know, they when they give you, they give you certain ratios. How do you evaluate the lens quality which is given to you? I have done the topography of intra lenses available in India, and to our surprise, some of the lenses which are supplied aspheric lenses, they are actual spherical lenses packed into a spherical, 
and give it to us. And that is why most of the patients sometimes they complain that they can't see <coughs> properly because of the poor cognitive lens and not the poor cognitive muscle. Sense history is one way by which you can find out the quality of the lens and they write on it and there are instruments to detect this. Then comes the MTF. The difference between the idea and the MTF actual is the indicating the quality of the lens which is given to us. The same thing. MTM and correctional functions are important quality control criteria to prove the quality optical performance of the eye. As more complex the optical design adds, more objective quality control is. If you want to have good quality of vision to the patients, you have to neutralize the study collaboration. Higher the MTF contrast, the better the image quality generated by the lens. The more difficult it is to distinguish the line pairs that is what I shown you, the lower the MTF value is. This is how the spherical. Now effect of pupil size. When you have a three millimeter, can you tell me how much is the normal human corneal spherical ablation? Anybody? Have you th thought of spherical ablation any time? One to six. No, it is 0.25 to 0.35 an average for everybody. And how much is the spherical ablation? This is 6 mm. How much is the spherical ablation of 3 mm? It is one sixth of the peripheral. That is around 0. So if you have a small pupil, every object will look the same, whether you have a spherical lens or a spherical lens. And this is what happens. But if you have a larger pupil, you see what is there in the right hand side. You have poor quality of vision, and what is there in the left hand side is a poor quality of vision. This is how actually the patient is system. If you leave some amount of spherical vibrations, what is there? <coughs> this is what I have studied for Indian lenses to find out the average spherical vibration. So what I am telling you is that tomorrow, today onwards, you have to start thinking about pure spherical lenses, aberration connecting lenses, because that is going to be a future of uh, intraocular lens and transcendent. If the chair permits, I have a video which will tell you the exact to how to neutralize the spherical aberration in about six weeks. The effect of custom made eye aim of the study is to find out the effect of neutralizing spherical aberrations and aesthetic of the cornea separately. This video is shows one of these more effects for what is going to I have taken the help of biotech company India from Ahmedabad to make these IOLs. These IOLs are made in two groups. One based on asphericity of the cornea and other based on spherical aberration of the cornea. Asphericity of the cornea and aberrations of spherical aberration for the result of anatomical so that no internal aberrations are left out. Iron power map from center to periphery is done and printed on each IOL label. In this slide, you see power map from center to the periphery and the difference in the power between center and periphery will give us various values of spherical aberrations or asphericity correcting ability of that IOL. Two groups of patients are selected. Group 1 has spherical aberration correcting IOL and group 2 has a spherical correcting IOL. Each Q value correcting IOL R labeled as RCQ1 to RCQ5, depending upon their ability to correct the Q value. And similarly, a spherical aberration correcting IOL are labeled as RC00 to RC05. All are modified C loop design. In this slide, you see how spherical aberration changes with the age. Normal cornea is prolated, bringing the peripheral rays in front of the fovea. The distance between the foveal focus and the marginal focus is known as a spherical aberration, as you see in this slide. If it is in front into the vitreous, it is prolated or positive spherical aberration. And if it is behind phobia, it is negative or oblate cornea. We must understand the relation between the Q value and the spherical aberration. In this graph, they are inversely proportionate. However, at around 0.2 value, both almost remains the same. 
one should not get confused with each other. Presently, all the IOS in the market are spherical aberration based. The spherical aberrations are presently understood under four headings, as in this slide. In short, you can understand a positive or a prolate and a negative or an ablate cornea in the shape of an egg. Spherical aberrations or QLU can be measured for each patient with one of these three equipment. I studied 1000 patients of Indian eyes for spherical aberrations. 70% of the patients fall between plus 0.27 to plus 0.35. That is, they are proven. For getting very good quality and a quantity of vision, we must neutralize aspherity of the cornea or spherical aberration. So, it improves the quality and quantity of vision. It also eliminates halos and night vision problem. It improves contrast sensitivity of the patient and it increases the depth of focus so, so that near vision and in monofocal IOL is reduced. Purpose of the two group is to find out which one of the two group performs better. For this study, in both the groups, I selected the patients between the age of 40 and 60 who do not have any other ocular pathology which can affect the performance of the IOL. In short, I tried to evaluate purely the optical performance of an IOL. This is a routine like any other studies. The only difference is the topography is done with two different machines to avoid any error. In this slide, you have both values for a spherical aberration as well as the Q value of a same patient. In group 1, for spherical aberration based IOL, are labeled between RC00 to RC05. In this, we try to neutralize the spherical aberration of the cornea. If the spherical aberration is plus 0.3, then RC03 IOL was implanted. And if it is 0.25, then RC02 was implanted. RC01 IOL can neutralize the spherical aberrations of 0.1. RC04 can neutralize the <coughs> spherical aberration of plus 0.4. Spherical aberration based IOLs were hydrophilic. I tried to undercorrect marginally spherical aberration in all patients to get some depth of focus. In group 2, IOLs are labeled as per the Q matching ability between RCQ1 and RCQ5. They are matched nearest to the value of Q between minus 0.1 to minus 0.5. Q match IOLs are hydrophobic in nature. I have overcorrected Q value to the nearest IOL so that we can leave some amount of overcorrections in order to get some amount of depth of focus. The cataract surgery and the post-operative follow-up is routine like other surgery. The only difference is the contrast for near and distance are done at 30 days and 180 days. Near vision add is noted, speed of reading is also noted for actual performance of IOL for near vision. In group 1, 70% of the patient achieved 6 fold vision with best correction and maintained the same vision for 6 months. All of them in this group achieved more than 6 fold vision till 6 months. 80% require an addition of 1 plus 1.5 for near and 100% require addition of plus 2 for near. Almost all patients wanted the second eye to be done immediately as they were so happy with the results of customization of intraocular lenses. Contrast sensitivity in this group has improved by 20%. In group 2, 80% of the patient achieved 6-4 vision with best correction for distance and 100% achieved 6-5 vision or more with best correction and same vision has been maintained for 6 months. All of them require plus 2 addition for near. To conclude this study, Q-based IOL gave slightly better distance vision than spherical aberration based. The spherical aberration based IOL gives better near vision <coughs> than a Q-based IOL. Customization of intraocular lens implant surgery is going to be future of cataract surgery. 
the take home message from here is that I request all of you to make this idea future of all the cataract surgery. Never correct the pseudophagic system into oblate. Ideal selection for monofocal as well as the multifocal should be done with matching Q value or spherical aberration value to get excellent quality and quantity of vision for very happy patients. <coughs> Let me ask you one question. How many of you know your speed of reading for year? Have you ever tried? 